Hello, welcome to this course called Trust the Bible. I'm Pastor David Gennaro from Florida Gardens Baptist Church, and I want to begin with a really important claim. And in fact, I believe it is the most important claim that you will hear in your life, and that is that you can trust the Bible. Now, what I mean by that is not simply that the Bible is a helpful book or contains good information. I mean that it is the authority for what life is all about uh, how to live life. It is what will lead you to a successful life because it is the Word of God, the one who created us and gives us life and gives meaning to life. So this is a big claim and there are many questions to work through as to how we got the Bible. What does it mean to say the Bible is the Word of God? And those are the kinds of questions we'll work through in this class. So I'm glad uh, that you are with us. Let me go ahead and just talk about what does it mean to trust the Bible. And I'd like to break that down into a couple different points. First, I mean that the Bible is the Word of God. That is quite a claim, right? How is it that this book that we have that's been translated into English, that has been uh, put together a collection of many different books over centuries, how is it that we claim it is the Word of God? Well. That's something that the Bible itself explains or, or claims about itself. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 is a great place to turn for this. Uh, it says there, all scripture is God-breathed. And that, that breathing, God breathing out the scripture is where we get the word inspiration. It means that the text of the Bible, uh, not not the people who wrote the Bible, this is a common misunderstanding, not that the people who wrote the Bible were inspired to write, but that the text itself, the final product, the text of the Bible, is breathed out by God or, or has it God as its source and is the Word of God. Jesus himself uses this description several times in his ministry in Matthew 15, verse 6. It would be one of many examples. He is debating with religious leaders, and he tells them that their human traditions are contradictory or are making null, he says, the word of God, referring to the scriptures. And there are many other places where Jesus uses this phrase to talk about the scriptures. So I believe, and what I'm going to seek to help you uh, have confidence in, is that when we're reading scripture, we are reading the words that God himself wants us to read, to know, to guide us, to reveal himself to us. And so these are the most important words. This is the most important book by far of any book uh, that is ever written. It is uniquely the word of God. There's no other writing out there that has the same uh, authoritative, exactly what God wants it to be uh, text uh, that we have in the Bible. Uh, next, there's a big implication. If the Bible is the Word of God, that means it is the authority. It is the authority in every area it addresses. It is the authority over morality, what is right and what is wrong. If it, if it says something is right and it says something else is wrong, I can't really say, well, I have a different opinion. I might have a different opinion, but then who am I disagreeing with? I, I'm disagreeing with, with God. Now, I'm not at this point saying you have to agree that the Bible is the Word of God and has this kind of authority. I'm simply explaining the kind of claims that I believe go along with trusting the Bible and that I want you to evaluate. Hopefully I can present some persuasive evidence for you as we go through the course. But if it is the Word of God, that means it is the authority. If it addresses a scientific issue, I think I can trust God more than even the top scientists of our day. Uh, because he's the one that created the universe that scientists are studying. And so the Bible, whatever it addresses, whatever it claims, it is going to be uh, the authority, the truth. I would have no reasonable way of challenging it because I would be challenging God who knows way more than me and uh, has actually created all of this that, that we see. So that's what I mean by authority. Next, it is without error. And this one, sometimes people will say, well, the Bible's the word of God. That doesn't mean that it's inerrant. The Bible itself never claims to be inerrant. And so why do we have to say the Bible is inerrant? 
uh, well, this is just a natural um, part that comes along with being the Word of God. If the Bible is the Word of God and the Bible contains errors, well, what does that mean? It would mean that God has made errors, and that is very problematic. Um, and in fact, you can see uh, uh, the sort of story of how many people have come to even atheism as Christians. It often begins with saying there are errors in the Bible. And then the next conclusion is, well, then the Bible can't be the word of God. And then the next conclusion has to be, well, then Jesus is wrong when he says the Bible is the word of God. And, and then the next conclusion has to be, well, then Jesus couldn't really have um, uh, been raised from the dead. And uh, on and on it goes until you have nothing left of Christianity. Uh, and so this is actually a very important point. The Bible doesn't uh, have specific verses talking about being without error. But if the Bible is the word of God, that's going to go along with uh, that concept. All right. Um, also, the Bible will guide you to the right way to live life. And to me, I think this is the most important point that we sometimes miss over. Uh, the, the Bible is going to tell you how you should live and not to boss you around or make your life miserable, but because God wants you to know what your purpose in life is and how to achieve that purpose and so the Bible is instructions that guide you to have a successful life. Joshua 1 verse 8 is the key passage for me to, to see this. It says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And so here God is speaking to Joshua and God is telling Joshua if you want to be successful, and you're, Joshua is about to lead the Israelites into the land of Canaan, and he's going to have to go to war, and God says, if you want to be successful, the first thing you need to know is not even military strategy and everything about the land of Canaan and the cities you're going to attack. The first thing you need to know is study the book of the law. That would have been the Bible in Joshua's day. Only five books had been written. The book of the law was a short way of referring to those books. And so God is telling Joshua, carefully meditate on it, study it, apply all of it to your life, be careful to do all of it, then you will be prosperous and successful. So this is the claim that I'm making. When I say trust the Bible, I mean trust it as your ultimate guide to a successful life, something you should study more than any other book, any other topic. You should want to know the Bible and work at uh, getting better and better at applying it to your life, living according to its principles, um, and that is a big claim, I know. Even most people who claim to be Christians don't really take that seriously. Perhaps even you have read the Bible for years, but haven't ever really thought of it that way. And here's what I would put forward to you. I think the Bible really either is this kind of guide that we should be devoted to its teaching, completely uh, above everything else as a priority of our life, or it's a fraud. It, it claims to be the word of God, but it's not, and therefore it has some other purpose for being written that is uh, less than uh, looking out for your interests, but instead is a tool to manipulate people or something anyway that we should toss aside. It's got to be one or the other. You can't take a book like this with the kind of claims it makes and say, well, it's a good book. Uh, I'll, I'll apply some of the parts that I like to my life. No, it's either all in or all out. Those are the options that I think a text like this leaves to you. So let me begin to introduce some of the, the problems. I, I know that what I'm saying isn't the popular view in our culture today. And you can see this in all kinds of tweets and uh, social media, Instagram. Here's one example. And I quote, this is a, a skeptic of the Bible. He writes, amazing how people lean on the Bible so much. It's gibberish and full of very ugly, hateful content. Now, that's, that's a very common kind of comment you'll find everywhere today. He's even retweeting a, a post that says, back when the Bible was written, then edited, then rewritten, then rewritten, then re-edited, 
and I'm not going to read that whole post, but, but you get the idea. There, there's, there are challenging questions to the Bible. And many people in our culture say, hey, the Bible is something that was written and rewritten and translated over and over again. And we have no way of knowing what the Bible originally said when it was written. It was written by man. It's not the word of God. Uh, we have no reason to think it's the word of God. And so let me just, in that context, say, hey, let's look at the evidence. Let's look at the story. Where does the Bible come from? How do we get the text we have today? And should we reject the Bible like this person does? And we'll see some other tweets next time. Uh, or should we embrace it as the ultimate guide to life because it is the word of God? That is such a crucial question for you to not only know what you believe, but why you believe it. And that's what we'll be working on.